This is our message to universities. If you want to accept the tremendous amount of federal dollars that you get every year, you must reject anti-Semitism. It's very simple. My administration will never tolerate the suppression, persecution, or silencing of the Jewish people. We have also taken a firm stand against the so-called Divestment and Sanctions Movement, or BDS. You know that very well. And I have to tell you, Jared Kushner and Ivanka, they've been talking to me about this for three years now, maybe longer than that. But I go back about three years where it's something uh, that I could do about it. You know, in this position, we can do things about it. Before that, not, not quite as much. I'd be just like you. <laughs> Successful, doing nicely, but not for this. Have you been naughty or nice? <laughs> So, what's up, guys? It is not Men's History Month, but I am wearing the Men's History Month t-shirt. And you can get that at the Jesse Lee Peterson Teespring store. And what you just heard, it is, it is Thursday, December what? December 12th? Is it 12th or 12th? Why am I looking at 12th? <laughs> I spit too. Um, 2019, live in the 9 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time out of Los Angeles, California. What's up, guys? And some of you requested, and I kind of wanted to anyways, that I look into this Trump executive order on um, anti-Semitism on college campuses type thing. And I did look into it a little bit. I haven't re- I Oh, man. <laughs> Joel confused me. He called- he per- he spelled it twelfth f- <laughs> With two capital F's at the end. <laughs> um, and so I will, uh, present a little bit more of that to you. You just heard Trump describing the bill somewhat. It's not in a bill, it's an executive order. And, um... We're live on Jesse Lee Peterson's YouTube, Twitch, no, not Twitch, dlive.tv. What's up, guys? Thank you for the lemons and ice cream and diamonds and ninja ginis and ninjets even sometimes. That's awesome. Um, and of course, Mixer and Periscope.tv slash JLP talk. So, uh, you know what? I have some p- photographs of those Jersey City suspects. Um... In the folder, Joel. Uh, I have so many pictures. I'm spitting all over the place. Too excited. Um, is is that a sign of Asperger's? I don't know. But anyways, here's a photograph of the suspect. He's dead now, but um, I think that was a pri- that's from 2009. I it looks like September 2009. And there's the driver license photo. Looks like of the female suspect who was also killed. A, old, a three years older than the man, bo- girlfriend of the suspect. And here, he was formerly associated with the black Hebrew Israelites. I would imagine that the Hebrew Israelites would disavow such actions as this. Maybe. I don't know. That would be curious to hear if they have anything to say about it. I pointed out at the top of the first hour Hake News today that Nick Sandman... Well, I didn't point out that Nick Sandman had anything to say about it, but he did tweet about it. And Nicholas Sandman is the 16 or 17-year-old Covington Catholic high school boy, pro-life young man, who was smeared by the Washington Post and other trash media, including even some rhinos, uh, for being called racist, for smiling in the face of a far-left, radical, indigenous person, American Indian activist, agitator, who beat a drum and walked up and got in his face. And Nicholas committed the hate crime of smiling. 
<laughs> like a classy young man would, right? But um, the black Hebrew Israelites were there stirring up trouble at that incident as well. Uh, they were a different set of black Hebrew Israelites out of D.C., Washington, D.C., after a pro-life rally. Various activists do their mess over there, right? So, um, you know, there was a guy who gave a super chat. I mentioned that this at the top of Hague News. Um, I think his name is Justin KG or something. Um, gave a super chat yesterday saying that the perp was a black Hebrew Israelite. And uh, turns out you were right, man. My bad. So I have some hot computer smell pointed out. I forgot to read super chats from Sunday's show. Let me read those super chats. And then I'll get into this, some of these stories. By the way, man, <laughs> Trump made me laugh a little bit when he told Greta Thunberg to chill, Greta, chill. I'll get to that in a sec. But let me read these super chats from Sunday. I stream on my channels on Sundays, and the Hake Report channel is not yet demonetized. YouTube apocalypse has hit, right? Hot Computer Smell uh, gave a super chat on Sunday saying, Can we donate to you throughout the week to get our super chats read live on the Hake Report? <laughs> I suppose so, right? I'm not sure how that works, Hot Computer Smell, but thank you. You, you see him? Yeah, the super chats. Mari Uvaldo gave a super chat. Good morning, James. When are you going to put on a suit? <laughs> Very good question, Mari. Appreciate the support. Malkuth X gave a super chat. Payment for Hake's t-shirt fund. Quit wearing those itty-bitty XL baby t-shirts, boy. Very good advice, Malkuth X. Appreciate it. Will I take it? Stay tuned. Sion C says, continue being yourself. Wear what you want. <laughs> Thank you, Sion. Malkuth X, message deleted by get a job. Inappropriate, Malkuth X, I'm assuming. Thank you, get a job, for looking out for me. So I don't have to read the super chat of Malkuth X. Ryan Moon says, thank you for Hake News. Shout out to my favorite Bond sister, Fran Rushy. Giovanni A, mostly only towards nonviolent felons. I agree. I think he was referring to me, uh, Giovanni A, was referring to me saying something along the lines of, he gave a super chat. He said, you see that one? Um... I think that was referring to me wanting to give, let felons still have their Second Amendment rights. <laughs> Jesse called me a beta for that one. For that take. The Hake take. D. Martin III said, have a good day, James. David from Kentucky. Thank you, man. I'm glad that you figured out how to um, write a, a chat within your super chats. That's cool. Congratulations. And then I'm just showing you this. At the bottom, you can see Synchronicity Bear, but you can see kind of an indication that I can't scroll down to see it. So I had to go in a whole other section of the site in order to find Synchronicity Bears. Merry Christmas, Hake! Thank you, Synchronicity Bear. Uh, his, his or her super chat. Appreciate that. So, you know what? Real quick, let me get to Greta Thunberg, and then I'll maybe get to some, a call or two or something. You guys can call in 888-775-3773. And then I have a ton of pics and clips regarding and screenshots regarding this anti-Semitism thing that Trump signed, this executive order. So, uh, Greta Thunberg, who is that 16-year-old radical climate alarmist from Sweden who came in here and with a gr grumpy face, White girl, oh man, I should be in school, and all that stuff, speaking at the UN, and a diff bunch of different dumb things, right? Propped up by the media, well, she made the t a Time Magazine Person of the Year, The Power of Youth, Time Magazine cover. And you saw, if you were watching the, the video feed, you saw a picture of it. This is the picture of the Time Magazine. I didn't know they were still in print. Babylon B tweeted that, that many Americans are surprised they're still in print. But yeah, they're still printing magazines. Um, 
And so this woman, Roma Downey, who's like a movie producer, so-called Christians. Um, <laughs> Joelle said, I didn't know they let you wear sweats <laughs> on the cover of Time magazine. <laughs> yeah, she wore sweats. At least they're, I don't know. Anyways. So Roma Downey tweeted, congrats, Greta Thunberg. Roma Downey is like a Hollywood producer. Seems to, like, put out Christian stuff, or is it? I don't know. Movies. And so Trump quote tweeted Roma Downey, whoever that is, Hollywood lady, maybe? Real Donald Trump tweeted, so ridiculous. Greta must work on her anger management problem, then go to a, a, old, a good old-fashioned movie with a friend. Chill, Greta. Chill. <laughs> And that went kind of like people liked it or were or thought that he was bullying her stupid stuff So what does Greta do? She changes her profile um, Her Twitter bio her Twitter profile bio To say Greta Thunberg at Greta Thunberg a teenager working on her anger management problem currently chilling and watching a good old-fashioned movie with a friend so she Acted like she took it in good stride, right? Took it in stride. But the point remains, Trump's point remains. He pointed out what everybody knows, that she is, she came off as an angry girl. Angry, brainwashed, concerned with matters that she does, thinks that she understands, but does not. And, uh, you know, Ted Talks is propping her up. And... You can see pictures of her serious face. I don't think she's chilling. I don't think so. So I just wanted to share that with you. All right. So let me quickly get to a couple of calls. And then I want to touch on this um, Trump fighting anti-Semitism for Ivanka and Jared. Let me get to Thomas out of Texas, first time caller. Oh, Thomas is talking about this bill. Thomas, what's up? Yo, I was just about to ask about that. Okay. What were you going to ask? What was your question? What do you think about it? I really agree with Jesse where I don't like this special treatment of anybody. Um, and yet I do see that the people, most of the people anyways, that are for this BDS stuff, which is what this bill is partly about, or this executive order is partly about. They are evil people, hateful people. Right. I don't know. I, I don't... What is, what is BDS? BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions uh, of Israel. Uh -huh. And I, I don't know what influence these universities have on that issue. Like, are they talking about should America, the, the American government, boycott and divest and sanction Israel or what? But the premise of it, at least on the part of the, the far left, is that Israel is colonizing the Palestinian land, right? They're oppressing yeah. the Palestinians. And that may or may not be true. And col right. colonization is a fact of life. I have some graphs I may show later if I have time of America is being colonized by the illegals, by the immigrants, by the so-called refugees. Yeah, for sure. It's being colonized. It's a fact of life. We, we can't hate it. We have to fight against evil. So there, is some, there is an evil colonization, and I'm sure there's a, a, a good colonization, but it's just a reality of life. It's kind of like uh, it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world, you know? But yeah. um, the liberals... I, I feel like, though, if, yeah. it, if it's forceful... If it's kind of, you know, using, I mean, if you ask me personally, whatever's going on over there has nothing to do with me. So, yeah. And whatever evil is being committed or those people can suffer and die. Like Jesse says, <laughs> it's just the truth, you know? Yeah. But, they have um, to fight their own issue. I, I do understand um, how people are upset about, you know, these Jewish lobbies kind of um, running policy here. Right. And a lot of that happens in the university. But I don't think they go about it the right way. I don't think they go about um, 
they they espouse it, you know, and and they have a lot of hatred towards those people. Oh and yeah, it kind of right. It kind of um, like I, I know. I sometimes I listen to Fuentes, you know, Nick Fuentes. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, he. he I, I just can't take him seriously. I mean, he he lives at home, you know, and oh, it's just yeah. <laughs> I, I I just can't take him seriously, man. And a lot of this stuff, it's like you. They, I have. You know, I really do understand a lot of where they're coming from because yeah. I do believe that um, we should be uh, making our own policy here. We shouldn't really have any foreign influence on our policy. Right. But at the same time, it's like they don't they don't like the Jews, but they don't want them to have their own place. And it's just it, honestly that situation is a mess. But um, I is. really don't. I don't know how um, I feel about Trump signing this this thing because yeah. kind of uh it it goes against free speech in a lot of ways and i think the universities have a lot of influence over the um the po- the, the things being taught in the classrooms like obviously it's very history is very one-sided towards i know you know you know towards the obviously you know what the I'm propagandists yeah. yep yeah, yeah definitely exactly. yeah i feel so the same way as you thomas speaking out about that when people start speaking out about that, it, you know, it, it causes a lot of it causes a lot of chaos. But me personally, I think they should just keep it to themselves, and I think good will eventually play out. And whatever happens to the people who are not on the good side, then they can just suffer and die. Yeah, I appreciate that, Thomas. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right. Take care, dude. You too. All right. Let me get to Donning Armor out of California. Donning Armor, what's up? Going James. Going fine. You came in a little crunchy there. Uh oh. Um, That's better. I, That's I better. Do I do this every time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so there is a, a lawsuit that was filed by uh, Donald Trump's uh, Department of Justice against um, Hesperia and the county of San Bernardino. Oh, wow. Uh, to, yeah, to uh, to anybody out there that that doesn't know California that's, or Hesperia or San Bernardino, you know, that's what you would call like a s hole county. Right, it's uh, out in the boonies, from, like a like a hundred miles from from L A. almost. Yeah, or at least and, well, sixty. I, I live much closer to the area. Yeah. Uh, I don't live in in the area, but uh, yeah, it's an s hole. Trust me. <laughs> that's um, where that's where one of the uh, terror attacks took place in uh, San Bernardino. That is, yeah, oh. that, yeah, that happened very close. What's to the lawsuit um, about? Well, the lawsuit is uh, about uh, discrimination against Latinos and blacks. Now, what the deal is is they passed a uh, some legislation or a law in uh, 2016, and uh, what it was was if any uh, tenants of you know uh, landlords had to do background checks. On their tenants in Hesperia. Okay. And if if any member of the family had committed a felon a felony or a crime, then they couldn't house them there. It was meant to decrease the amount of crime. Right. They have and, a crime problem in there. Yeah, and wouldn't you know, uh, Latinos and blacks uh, were were more likely to have been evicted because right. they were more likely to have committed a crime. Yeah. Like, <laughs> who would have figured? Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's just uh, the reality. Currently. Apparently, that's racist. So Donald Trump and his uh, Department of Justice are now suing those counties. Uh, so you could check that out. And okay. I'm just, you know, I call in to bash Donald Trump every every now and then because uh, I know you guys love him for some reason and I can't understand. And you came in with that clip uh, of Donald Trump uh, making Israel great again. Could you imagine <laughs> if instead of saying Jews, he would say white people? Fight that would white be people? awesome, kind of. Yeah, That'd be do you awesome. think he'll ever do it? Do you think he wants to? I don't know if anybody has his ear about that. You heard him say Ivanka and Jared have been telling him about this for three years. I don't yeah, know if anybody is Jewish on the side of white. His Jewish son-in-law. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, look, I don't hate the Jews, I'm just saying. I know. It's apparent to everybody, and I think it's starting to get apparent to you. Yeah. And, if I do, before I go. All right. Uh, you need to talk to the guy that I recommended to you. I don't care what Billy says. Okay. <laughs> uh, is Billy black or a white man? Billy? Which Billy? 
And what I don't know, you, you said that you were going to do the story, but then Billy said uh, that you shouldn't do it or something like that. No, that I mean, I don't think so. Comment. No, uh, okay. uh-uh. Maybe it was nothing like that. No, I, right. I, we're, we're talking about uh, who should talk to whom on what platform. I'm, uh, I'm okay. talking with Jesse right now. Thank you, man. Right, well, well um, on a scale from 1 to 10, how, how do you favor Donald Trump as, uh, as the president so far? I put him as, I give him, I want to give him an eight and a half. I don't know. Eight and a half. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's, I'll I mean, there's, there's something to his personality that is, you know, strong. And generally he's for, I mean, he wants to be for what's right. He goes with what he sees. And you're right. He doesn't have their, you know, the... The white issue, the Christian issue, the free speech issue, those people don't have his ear for for whatever reason, and that's not a good thing. And he's I knew that I knew going into it he was gonna make um you know, do stuff that we disagreed with. I knew that he was kind of okay with the gays more so than than I am and things like that. But uh okay. yeah, oh, kind of like a I still type but, of a thing, but he was the best out of the bunch. He was actually inspiring because he's like, like I alluded to, the strength of his personality is just unmatched in the um, political world. Okay. Um, And I think you know that, like I pointed out to you about that he's not a, he doesn't come off as a phony politician, even though he does some things that are politically correct like this. But we can talk more later, Donning Armor. I, uh, we'll, we'll talk again. We will. We will. All right. All right. Have a good one, man. Thanks for the tip. Bye. Thanks. Let me get to Louie out of Idaho. Let me get to Louie. I think Louie might have been the guy that I wasn't able to get to the other day or talk too much. Louie. Yeah, what's up? What was your question? My question was, you need the question of the day. Oh, I need a question of the day like Jesse or yeah. the question of the week? Okay. All right, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I will. I will consider that. Thanks for holding on and tell me. Thing, you know? Say it again. You're good, man. You're you're awesome. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Take All right. You, Take care. I'm gonna get to Carl and everybody else, but let me just try and and present this the best way that I that I can. So I have the a, a ton of clips, and take a look at like a screenshot of of this group and compare it to the screenshots of the other politically correct things that Obama did in this he has yes he has Jared Kushner and Ivanka and um, a lot of you guys are not fans of them but look at behind him uh, in the short man, shorter man I don't know if he's actually short even <laughs> but some of these guys are tall including Melania um, Bob Kraft and he's gonna pres- he's gonna have Bob Kraft speak. I don't know. I didn't know that Bob Kraft was Israeli or Jewish or whatever, but um, and then you have Alan Dershowitz, Melania. Dershowitz is a liberal professor, right? Um, Bob Kraft is the um, Patriots football team owner and he signs Tom Brady's check. Let me just play the, some of these clips and I'll comment. I just I kind of like the crew. Behind Jared Kushner, you can see part of the face of Doug Collins, who seems like an an okay guy for a representative. Yeah, there's Doug Collins behind Jared Kushner. That is a much better crew than um, the Obamas would have. Like, they would have, like, just disgusting... So, it's... Even though I don't... I'm not fully on board with this, necessarily, uh, this executive order, I like the crowd, kind of. I even kind of like Jared even though he is a liberal and he's, I guess this first step act resulted in a murder. Swing back out to the widescreen, there is this guy who I think was a border agent or something, or some guy, maybe an officer or something. This short guy next to the smiling man, he's right, he's standing right next to Melania. I think he was, he went in during the Poway uh, massacre when the white guy on Gab, the Trump hater, but white guy, I think he hated the, um, he, he attacked the Jewish synagogue in Poway somewhere. And this guy 
I think he, if I'm not mistaken, he was one of the guys that, one of the deputies or something that went in and stopped the massacre or helped stop it or something. I could be mistaken. Anyway, let me play part A. This is Trump introducing Bob Kraft and Bob Kraft making a statement about um, America and Israel and stuff and the universities. Here's, here's the first clip. I also want to bring a friend of mine up. Uh, he's a tremendous success in so many other businesses, but they only know him because he signs Tom Brady's check every week. And he's a really, he's a champ. He's a winner. His wife, Myra, passed away a longer time ago than we think, Bob. That was a big, uh, that was a big tough time for you and uh, for me too and for Melania. I just want to tell you, you've been a special friend of Israel. Nobody closer to Israel than Bob Kraft. So, Bob, please come up. Please come up. And as usual, his team is mired in first place. Have you ever been in second place? Not too often. You know what I'd like you to do, Bob, while you're here? Because we could all learn from Bob. He's a champ. He's a winner. If you could say a few words about Israel, please. We know that college campus is a place where you bridge build and you include people and have education and not be something that is exclusive uh, and drives people away and generates hatred. So I'm so proud that in, at this time we're doing something that is so bipartisan. And uh, my wife of blessed memory would be smiling now because she loved America first and Israel and wanted to build bridges between the two places and have tikkun olam. And I think this, more than anything, is going to help do that. So thank you very much. You, you. Nice. So I liked how he said America first. Don't you like that? Even if it is just words, I, I like that. I like how you said at least that. And the other thing I like about this is Trump brought up Bob Kraft, and he also brought Alan Dershowitz. Those guys are getting accused and reamed in the media. It's not popular to be associating with them right now. And Bob Kraft especially is like a Trump supporter, but he was he's accused of some illicit stuff that I don't even really want to repeat related to, like, who knows what, right? Um, but, and same thing with Alan Dershowitz. Basically, they're getting um, accused of, like, sex stuff or something like that. But I like that Trump is standing by those guys and having them stand, you know, here. Because it's, it's um, for one, it's innocent and less proven guilty. And for another, it's um, standing with the people that have stood with whom, who have stood with you. And uh, that's cool. Even Alan Dershowitz is, is a liberal, but... He's, he's been solid on at least the Russia thing being a nonsense and even this impeachment thing being nonsense. Let me just touch on this. Um, Trump has, Trump talks about the wicked murders that have taken place of, of Jews. Let me just go ahead and try to see if I can just blow through all these things. In the middle of it, I'm going to get to Carl from Illinois and some of your other callers. But um, let's go with that. Yeah. Yesterday, two wicked murderers opened fire at a kosher supermarket and killed four innocent souls, including a brave police officer who faced down the shooter and very bravely faced the shooter down. With one heart, America weeps for the lives lost. With one voice, we vow to crush the monstrous evil of anti-Semitism whenever and wherever it appears. And we're working very hard on that. And I can tell you that that we have a lot of people in government working very, very hard on that, and we appreciate their work. It's not easy. Joining us on stage for this event are two great Jewish American patriots, Army veteran Oscar Stewart and Border Patrol agent Jonathan Morales. As many of you remember, both of these heroes were at the Shabbat of Poway Synagogue when a killer opened fire. And by the way, Robert Jeffress, I see you right here. And uh, what a tremendous uh, faith leader you are and a tremendous man you are. Pastor, thank you for being here so much also. We appreciate it. We have so many people and so many great faith leaders 
here, and I want to thank you all for being here. It's fantastic. This is a great, great day. We appreciate it very much. Robert, thank you very much. They race towards the gunfire and save countless American lives. Oscar and Jonathan, thank you both for responding to the worst evil with the best of American valor. We need to get Jesse Lee Peterson to get Trump's ear more. He needs to listen more closely to the Jesse Lee Peterson show so that he realizes that it's not anti-Semitism, it's just hatred, it's evil. But um, let me show you this, this Trump, this boy who had a Trump yarmulke here. Uh, listen to this, part, part C. Recently, I received a remarkable letter from a 12-year-old boy named Austin Polanski from San Francisco, California. In the letter, Austin summed up the meaning of Hanukkah. He said, on Hanukkah, it is a tradition to light the menorah and place it by the window. We do this to exemplify how we are not afraid to show who we are or what we believe in. In Austin's letter, we asked if he could celebrate Hanukkah with my family at the White House. And this year, we are thrilled to let you know that Austin is with us today. Where is Austin? Where is Austin? Come on up here, Austin. Come on up here, Austin. Good-looking guy. But come on, Austin. Don't be shy. It's only Is Bob Kraft. <laughs> you want to say a few words? Uh, uh, you sure. want to say, come on, Austin. Come on, Austin. Let's get with it, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me at the White House today. It was very unexpected, though. My mom pulled me out of school uh, when uh, um, the White House called, and I was in the middle of lunch. <laughs> Probably one of the first times I was ever speechless. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good, good job, Austin. Come here. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. He didn't know he was going to do that. You did a good job. Huh? <laughs> Considering we got you by surprise a little bit, right? Thank you. Stay with the First Lady. <laughs> do you know about Kraft and everybody on stage? Trump, right? yeah. Yeah. Huh? Is that a Trump yarmulke? Oh, it's a Trump yarmulke. Wow, I like it. Can I have that, Austin? I want that. Uh, I just thought that was kind of cute. Um, here's where he talks about the stuff that he's done for Israel, including making the, moving the embassy, the U.S. embassy, to Jerusalem. And then I'll get to calls. So two years ago, I recognized the true capital of Israel, and we opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And we got it built. They were thinking anywhere for $1 billion to $2 billion. I did it for $350,000, you know. Nice. We got a building that was in beautiful shape in the best location, best location there is. And we got it done. We got it done. We had it open in four months. And it's right now open. And I don't know, maybe someday they'll build a more expensive version of it. But it can't get much better, right, Robert? I think, and Ron can tell you, it can't get much better than what we have. We have the best location. They were going out. They wanted me to sign an order for anywhere from $1 billion to $2 billion, and they were going to look for a piece of land. But they said land in Jerusalem is very rare and very expensive. I said, do you think we have a piece? And David Friedman, our great ambassador, did a fantastic job. He did a fantastic job. I said, David, they want to spend $2 billion. I said, uh, go check it out. Let me see. Call me back. He said, sir, I think we can do it for about 250000 maybe 300000 so we'll save a billion dollars, and we have a better location than any location we could have gotten on, right? And it's been open now for a long time, so it was great. And we used all Jerusalem stone. Friends of mine like Jerusalem stone. Over here, it costs a fortune. Over there, it wasn't so expensive. I like that. He's a better Jew with his money than the Jews, or with America's money, right? Isn't that that's nice? At least everybody got to love that. Carl out of Chicago, Illinois. Carl. Thanks for holding, man. What's up? Hey, James. Hey. Uh, it's Reisha from the Discord. How are you? Who from the Discord? Reisha. Reisha, I remember you. Thanks for calling again. Yeah, you got it. You know, I wanted to call again because uh, yesterday I came home and I opened my uh, mailbox 
and I had the most gorgeous <laughs> Bond postcard. It uh, made my day and more. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you yeah, signed up you, for the Bond mailing list then. You know, I didn't even know I did, but I did like when Jesse had the first matching Oh yeah. Fun for the thing. Uh, I got a counseling session, just like you know, get, give some money, and I guess, and I guess they must have gotten my address in. But anyway, okay, yeah, it, you, all of you look super handsome. You know, the the the, the girls look beautiful, and uh, Jesse making the whatever <laughs> you know, the bunny ears is classic. Right, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Appreciate the plug. Yeah, you guys, if you haven't, if you're not on the Bond mailing list, go to rebuildingtheman.com slash subscribe, or just donate, and, um, unless you want to call and opt out of getting mail from us, we don't send a lot of junk mail. You'll notice that Raisho, that was uh, some time ago, he did, this is the first, pro probably, item of mail that he's received from us, unless he got a receipt for the, for the donation or the, or the counseling. In the mail. No, it's true. It's my first piece of mail from Bond. So, nice. you know, if you guys want to send more, that's fine with me personally. Cool. But, um, yeah, I do want to say that. I, I want to say two things, and one of them is <clears throat> directed at Joel. Don't be scared, Joel. It's good. <laughs> um, and what, the first thing is that, like, my, my favorite thing is now that I've been listening to the show, you know, I, I want to comment that the, the, my, my most favorite thing about Trump is how he talks, you know, he, he yeah. always, he, he talks in like a, what, what I think people around the world think is the classic American way, you know, he's always like, it's the best, it's the greatest, <laughs> and it just makes you, uh, makes you feel proud, you know, of, yeah. of your country, and I think that's kind of what's missing, because we've always been, uh, or for the past eight years, we've been told that, oh, you know, we've got work to do, yep. our cops aren't the best. We aren't the best and shit like that and stuff like that. And, you know, now he's coming out and he's saying, you know, we are the best because that's that's the truth. Yeah. America is the most positive force on this side of heaven. So we should we should be proud to say it. You express that so well, man. You are right. And that's what I wish I could have expressed to Donning Armor. And I think that he would agree with you on that. That's cool. So um, I was uh, I was hanging out with this with this with this woman the other day, and I showed her Joelle's uh, first uh, episode of the reality show, and you know it was fun. I, I I like it. I like the whole idea of taking the children back from the pervert yeah. that wish to dress them up in like you know strip these outfits and have them dance for on the table and have like moms yell at them after the dance, you know, like the other dancing reality shows. I think that's disgusting, and I think it's corrupting the children. But, I, you know, I like what Joel is doing with that. <clears throat> but the woman I was watching the show with said, why are they all, uh, you know, white girls? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, maybe the black girls couldn't make it on time. <laughs> but, you know, uh, why are they? You know, what, 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 I don't know, what's the deal with that? What would you say to them, Joel, if somebody said, to you that, oh, you know, all the <clears throat> girls in your dance group are white or whatever. Well, it was just the area that I, that I teach out of. It was just majority white and uh, Filipino. And it, it, it was just the area that I was in, to be honest. There was not a lot of black uh, people around that area. So the majority of my students over the years have been either white or uh, Filipino and maybe Hispanic, but rarely, rarely, rarely. I get, like, one black girl every blue moon. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, who cares? You right. know, it's like they are <laughs> what they are. Yeah, right, right, right. So I, I think that's, like, kind of uh, hypocritical of people, you know, maybe that are liberal and uh, as opposed to conservatives, that they care about that stuff while conservative, conservatives just go with the flow when it comes to, like, racial stuff. To be honest, I never even thought about it until people start bringing it up. Oh, you only have a white girl. I never even considered or even thought of it like that. But I appreciate you for tuning in, man. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah, you got it, man. I like the Youth Revolt song. I like the like the mummy line when you when you go up you know, up in your head mummy. And that, that, that's <laughs> funny and you know, keep doing what you're doing and thanks for taking my call. Right on, Carl. Thank you, man. Appreciate All right, it. Have bro. a good show. Bye bye. All right. Bye. That was a nice plug, Joel. And Joel couldn't turn on his camera because uh, no. ba- we black. He black. He black. <laughs> Battery died. James out of New Jersey. Thanks for holding. James, what do you want to say? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear. Hi. Uh, yeah, big fan. I love uh, Jesse. Uh, don't really know you too well, but I was calling about the shooting that took place in Jersey City. Yeah. Yesterday. Yep. Yeah, I was uh, kind of suspicious because I'm looking at some of the footage. It says, like, policeman shot. He's laying on the ground. Another cop comes over. He gives him a tug. The guy jumps up. No blood. Runs away. Oh. The suspects, you don't see any bullet holes anywhere. I mean, I've seen bullet holes in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, that were 150 years old. You got everybody and their mother with a cell phone now. And they say the cops were shooting for hours and hours. And yet, you don't see any bullet holes. And it's just suspicious how the day later Trump signs this executive order concerning Israel. And uh, also, did you know, I don't know if you callers, I mean, your uh, listeners are aware, but the only company that produces the drug for the hormones for these trans kids, it comes out of Israel. So if they pass the BDS legislation, I've heard something along then those you lines. can't even you can't even boycott the company that's making the drugs to turn your kids tranny. So I don't understand how you guys have this undying love for Israel when Israel is a strategic liability in a lot of different senses. Okay. Well, thank you for the tips, man. By the way, I'm not done. All right. I got a little more for you. (laughs) All right. So yesterday, I mean, you know, sure, you would have heard the perpetrators if they were white. That would have been immediately put out over the radio. But since, you know, you had... They said they were black Israelites, I believe, right? Right. Well, so therefore, formerly black Israelites. The, you know, well, now I guess they're disavowed. But right. It's, you know, it's convenient in that sense. But if you, like in France last week, they passed a similar legislation. And it was funny because the day before, somebody just mysteriously went around and started spray painting swastikas all over these Jewish gravestones just in time for the vote to go ahead in France. So, I mean, people really got to wake up because we're all being lied to, and everything you see on TV is a lie. That's a fact. So all I right. want to let the listeners give them a nugget of thought to chew on there for a little while. Thanks. Appreciate it, show. James. Thank you, man. Take care. Okay, bye. All right. Who knows? Let me quickly get back to see if I can finish this up. Um, I told you about the Trump... Trump uh, saving a bunch of money by w- when he built the embassy over there in, in Jerusalem. Well, here's a little more. Here's a little more that he did for Israel. Hopefully not for the uh, tr- transgender stuff. I don't think so. But here's what Trump did. Here's more of what Trump did. Part E. I've also recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. That was another <laughs> And I said to Bob, so what, Bob Kraft, I said, so what was bigger, Bob? What we did for Israel in terms of Jerusalem and moving the embassy to Jerusalem, becoming the capital of Israel, or the Golan Heights, which you've been looking to do for 52 years. They've been having meetings on the Golan Heights. Nothing happened until I came along. I said, Bob Kraft, which is bigger? Which is more important to the Jewish people? He said, neither. I said, what does that mean? He said, what you did by terminating the Iran nuclear deal is bigger than both. I think that's true. I think that's true, Jeff. You know, could be true. I said, I sort of agree with that. I like that part because Obama gave us that Iran nuclear deal. And it was a, it was basically, I don't trust anything that Obama does. So I like that he repealed that. And it, you do notice that there is a big fight amongst the liberal, pro-Israel people. No, the actually, I don't know even know if the liberals are actually that pro-Israel, because they like the they like the diversity in Israel too. <laughs> I think the liberals were fighting against Israel building a wall, idiots. But uh, 
there's div- division amongst the uh, so-called right-wing pro-Israel people and the left. Let me quickly get to this. Here's a little more explanation on this um, this discrimination, anti-discrimination executive order. Here's a little bit more about it that Trump explains. But today we're taking another historic action. In just a few moments, I'll sign an executive order to combat anti-Semitism. This action makes clear that Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, which prohibits the federal funding of universities and other institutions that engage in discrimination, applies to institutions that traffic in anti-Semitic hate. So, it's not anti-Semitic, but anyways, let me show you, if you guys don't already know, because a lot of you guys call in not understanding, the undying love for Israel that Jesse has and I grew up with, and most Christians in general, especially the boomers they, <laughs> that a lot of people mock, and... Uh, the, why there is such a support for Israel amongst the Christians. Here is Robert Jeffress, Pastor Robert Jeffress, who's a Trump supporter. He goes on Fox News a lot. He's out of, he's out of uh, Texas, I believe. Part I, Joel. Uh, Robert Jeffress, I didn't know him, but he, I watched him, and I'd watch him on different shows, and I'd say, I like that guy. Man, he talks really great about me, and I like people that talk well about me. <laughs> And uh, he was saying, you know, he may not be the greatest Christian I've ever seen. He may not know the Bible quite as well as the rest of us. In fact, he may not know it very well at all. But that guy's a real leader. And he's going to do a job. And I appreciated that statement. I don't know if I should have, but I did. And I think we have led because I think we've made more progress toward faith leaders. We got rid of the Johnson Amendment, which was a disaster. Uh, So I'd like to ask if, Robert, if you could say a couple of words. It is true. I believe President Trump is the most pro-faith president in history when you look at what he has done for people of all faiths. And, Mr. President, you know, Jewish and Christian believers alike believe what God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, that God would bless those who bless Israel and he would curse those who curse Israel. And I want to thank you, Mr. President, for being the kind of president who has the courage to stand up and be, when it comes to Israel, on the right side of history, but most importantly, you're on the right side of God, and that's why you are not going to fail, and we're going to stand behind you 100%. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Jerry. Nobody can disagree with that, right? You shouldn't be cursing Israel or anybody, right? You shouldn't be cursing people. So that's nice, Pastor Robert Jeffers. Let me quickly get to Alan Dershowitz, uh, who's the Harvard Law professor, hashtag me too by the, the so-called victim of Epstein, but he's still on stage with Trump. I, I kind of like that part. Uh, here's Alan Dershowitz talking. For 65 of my 81 years, I have spent at universities uh, all over the country and all over the world There is no more important event in those 65 years to turn universities away from being bastions of hatred and discrimination than this executive order being signed today. It is a game changer. It will go down in history as one of the most important events in the 2,000-year battle against anti-Semitism. Thank you, Mr. President. You did a great, great job. The people who helped you do this did a great, great job, and you will be remembered by history for all time for having signed this very important order. Thank you. I didn't know that he was 81. That's wild. He's Alan Dershowitz, 81. And some liberals responded to this on Twitter saying, I think that allowing blacks and women into uh, college is a little more important than, than that, of getting rid of discrimination. Whatever. Discrimination is not always bad. And there is undeniable hatred of Jews in these liberal universities and and Israel. We just now need to deal with the hatred towards whites, men, Christians, 
normal thinking people in these universities and actually probably abolish the the uh, public funding of of universities because they're so corrupt, right? Um, so that's what I say about that. Dershowitz, you know, I think he is probably uh, Jewish, probably not Christian. I think that laws, as Jesse made the point, laws don't solve, and even executive orders don't solve hatred. You have to deal with people's evil hearts. But let me just show you, I'd never heard Jared Kushner talk before, so he, we're going to skip to L, Joel, the last one. <laughs> I gave it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Uh, skip to, jo- to skip to L, Joel, and let's play Jared Kushner talking a little bit about Trump. I just want to thank uh, President Trump for all of his leadership on behalf of America. What we've seen the president accomplish over the last three years has been extraordinary. When President Trump decided to run, there were a lot of people who weren't sure what somebody who had never done anything in politics before would do. And I would say that all of our expectations have been greatly exceeded. The plans that the team has put in place under the president's leadership have produced uh, economic uh, miracles for this country. And I am confident that the best is to come. But what I believe is even more important is the president's commitment to keeping all Americans safe, to keeping America free, to keeping America respectful of people of all faiths and religions. And the work that the president's done to ensure that is something that will have an impact for generations to come. So uh, I just want to thank you for your amazing leadership and for all that you do to protect so many people. So there, I think that this is kind of shallow stuff. Um, but I didn't know that that's how he sounded. Sounds like a nice guy, right? <laughs> he has a higher pitched voice than I expected. He's tall. So anyways, um, I l- did a little bit of reading about, you know, I went to the White House website talking about this executive order. I didn't read the executive order itself. I haven't found it. But it references when enforcing Title VI against covered anti-Semitic discrimination agencies will consider the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism, which doesn't exist, as well as the IHRA, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, their contemporary examples of so-called anti-Semitism. So I looked that website up, International whatever Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, and they said they have a working definition of anti-Semitism, which... We know it doesn't exist, right? Only hatred does. And sometimes some of these things are not hatred, but listen to this. Adopt the following non-legally binding working definition of anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property. Blah, blah, blah. This is confusing. Let me jump down to examples, because that's a little bit more clear. Here are some some examples that they think are anti-Semitism. Calling for, aiding, or justifying the killing or hate harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or an extremist view or of religion. Okay, that would be wrong. It's already wrong. Uh, making mendacious, dehumanizing, demoni- demonizing, or stereotypical allegations. That last one is bad because we need to be allowed to stereotype allegations about Jews, such as the power of Jews as a collective, such as, but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. That is where they're cracking down on people's freedom to express. They think that the spreading of information causes the hatred, because I think that they're, they're physical-minded uh, rather than spiritual-minded. They don't realize that you can disagree without hating. Accusing Jews as a people of being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoing committed by a single Jewish person or group, or for even acts committed by non-Jews. Denying the fact scope mechanisms, i.e. Ga- gas chambers, for example, at least, or intentionally or intentionality of the genocide of the Jewish people at the hands of National Socialist Germany and its supporters and accomplices during World War II, the Holocaust. So, um, 
I did a show about that because I don't agree that that's necessarily hatred to be questioning it or denying it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that they would endorse it, right? So, accusing Jews as a people or, or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust, see, that does happen. It's just like the um, blacks exaggerating uh, and <laughs> liberals in general exaggerating the horrors of slavery and stuff like that. It does happen. So there's a whole bunch of examples like that. They hold Jews collectively responsible for the state of Israel, drawing comparisons to Israeli policy to that of Nazis, um, denying Jewish people their rights to self-determination by claiming the existence of the state of Israel is a racist endeavor, things like that. So uh, I disagree with some of these examples. I mean, example for it, no duh, because um, it doesn't exist. It's a misdiagnosis of the problem. Um, and they point out that there are, that it is a crime in some countries to deny the Holocaust or distribute so-called anti-Semitic materials. And there are, they have the existence of hate crimes, which should not exist. It should just be, you commit a crime, you're committing evil. And uh, discrimination, which is a human right. Discrimination should be a human right. So, I'm going to get to your last calls. I see some of you calling in. But, um, real fast, I want to point out that some of this BDS stuff is a claim that um, Israel is being, like I said, colonialistic. Well, colonizing is what the left is for, too. The left is for colonization, and if you don't believe me, just look at the demographics. I have this folder called White Population uh, Share in the United States Graphs, Joel. And you look at some of these graphs and you see the declining white population, just show in general everything in that folder. Um, Non-Hispanic white share of the electorate from 19... 86 to 2018 went from 85%, approaching 86%, all the way down to under 74% in 2016, 2018. So it's dropped. And um, I have the U.S. Hispanic population hits a new high. Meanwhile, 1990 to 2016 went from 9.6 million people to 57.5 million people. Um, and um, then I have the general population by race and origin from 2017. 60.7% white, 18.1% Hispanic. And then, you know, have you have the blacks who are a smaller minority than the Hispanics now. Blacks, you've been replaced. No longer important. You're taken for granted. You know that. Um, well, if you look at the Zoomers, compare this graph, you see a big chunk, this orange chunk is whites. Six, almost 61%. It used to be, what, 85%? And so this is an example of colonization, because if you look down at the, uh, Gen Z, Gen Z plus, uh, race ethnic profile, Less than half are whites. Um, Joel, the next little pie chart thing shows whites in gray, and they're less than 50%. Hispanics among Zoomers, Zoomers are born since, what the heck? Oh, Z plus. This is born since 2007. This is not the Zoomers. This is Z Generation Z plus. So whites are already a minority amongst the kids. Those born 2007 they're probably age 12 and under, right? White's a minority already amongst the kids. 26% Hispanic, 13.8% black, 5.2% Asians. Wow. They finally topped 5%. Uh, two plus biracial, 4.7%, etc. So those are examples. That's an example of colonization, I would say. Wouldn't you agree? But you don't hear the, the left wanting boycott, divestment, and sanctions of America. 
<laughs> well, I guess you do, but they don't want to boycott, divest, and sanction the liberals and the rhinos who want all this in- immigration to continue. And you don't want them, you don't see them boycott, divest, and sanction against uh, Obamacare giving, what is it, um, what are those called, birth control pills to people. So, it's a mess. I just thought I'd share that with you. So, um, my caller is hung up, I'm sorry. I, maybe, maybe they're just calling and giving tips to Nick. But, that's about it, guys. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow for Get It Off Your Chest Friday. I can't believe it's already past 10. Um, don't be mad. This thing that, this, um, executive order doesn't actually affect us, I don't think. Because it's universities. Um, we shouldn't care about them. Because... They're haters anyways. I saw these tweets, these left-wing tweets about this stuff. And they're attacking Trump. They just have severe Trump derangement syndrome. They're, I'm like, you're against it, I'm for it. And I'm halfway joking because I'm not exactly for everything that is in this stuff because I don't like the push about it, about the anti-Semitism thing. But there is true, it is true that there is hatred towards the Jews. That is a fact. So, but we should deal with everything. And uh, let's keep on pushing about the hatred towards the whites and their own hatred within your own heart. Deal with that, then you can overcome the world. It seems like, that's what the Bible says. Seems like that's what Jesse's doing. Seems like that may even be what Trump is doing. Even if he is making a few mistakes. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Enjoy. Look out for The Fallen State. I think there's going to be a new episode tomorrow. Yesterday, we had a Sunday service. Make sure you check that out if you didn't catch it. Sunday service from 2009. It was excellent. And you do hear me in it, too. 2009, James. (laughs) All right. Take care.